community of St. Francis Xavier in Hunt Valley, Maryland. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This liturgy is being offered for you, the members of our parish. As always, it is good to be together. A reminder about communion today. Please follow the direction of our ushers and wait to be directed to come forward. So as to ensure safety and good health, we ask that everyone come forward in the communion line. If you do not wish to receive, please pray, uh, place your arms crossed against your chest and then just return to your seat after the person in front of you. After Mass, unfortunately, we ask that you do not congregate inside or outside the doors. Please exit and move to the parking lots to allow others to depart and maintain adequate social distance. Thank you so much for understanding. Please read our online bulletin or refer to our website for information on the following. Our poor box for the month of September is for the Women's Education Alliance supporting Archdiocesan Catholic schools. Middle school formation and confirmation preparation both begin tomorrow, Sunday, September the 20th. Family formation materials for elementary grades will be available for pickup next Sunday, September the 27th at 10 a.m. Parents will need to attend a brief meeting in the Mary Garden on our program, which is new this year. Bring a chair, your mask, and your child. <laughs> Help is needed to harvest potatoes at the First Fruits Farm on Wednesday morning at 9.30 to 11.30. For this, please contact Joni Carlson. Alpha begins on September 30th at 6.30 p.m. and will continue through the fall on Wednesday nights via Zoom. Alpha provides an opportunity to explore some of life's sticky questions. And Wild Goose, our small faith sharing opportunity sequel for those who participated in Alpha last winter, and for anyone else who is interested, will begin October the 1st and be held on Thursdays via Zoom. And now, with utmost gratitude, let us prepare to worship. For those of you following at home, our gathering hymn is All Are Welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall end divisions. My dear friends, we gather here indeed, knowing that all are welcome. And so we begin with that great sign of welcome in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May grace, peace, light, and hope of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. Obviously for our Jewish brothers and sisters, Rosh Hashanah. So they celebrate a new year, a new turning over, uh, a desire to be closer to God. And of course that will end the high holy days with Yom Kippur. As we gather too, we recognize we're always in need of God's forgiving love. 
for the times we've sinned, for the times we've failed, particularly lacking in generosity. So we turn now trusting, indeed, in the Lord's mercy and the Lord's love. Lord Jesus, in your kingdom, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you will not forsake those who turn to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are just in all your ways and abounding in compassion. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated and be attentive to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, 
That means fruitful labor to me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them out into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, The landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, and each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, the last ones worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give the last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. We gather here and told we are welcome, and we are. We gather here in God's presence. I want to share a description of three images that are with me that I think help set our context, several reflections on the gospel, and the challenge for us to live that this day. Images and where we are. I'm sure you have all seen them, and I can't help but see the pictures of the terrible fires in California and Oregon. And so you have pictures of trees that are emblazed, thousands and thousands and thousands of acres that are on fire. And so it challenges us to what is our impact on our environment. 
Is there a justice issue there for us to consider, for us to labor with, to bring healing and hope? Second image I have, which you may or may not have seen because so many of us don't do magazines anymore, but we still get them at the house where I live. It's the cover of Time magazine this week. And the cover of Time magazine has its typical red border and it's a solid block square with very small names printed in white and sort of in print over it, it says 200,000. 200,000. It's clearly a reference to those who have died from the COVID virus. So again, we're challenged to think what it means to be people who are being healed in the midst of so much suffering. And of course, I think all of us after last evening are well aware of the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a woman of incredible grace and intelligence, a woman of uh, incredible courage and always seeking justice, particularly for women. One of my favorite stories about her, she was asked, you know, well, how many women do you think would be appropriate on the Supreme Court. And she was very quiet, as she always is, and smiled and said, well, nine. <laughs> she said, well, of course, why wouldn't it be nine? For decades and decades and decades, there were always nine men, and nobody asked if that was the right number. So of course, nine women is the right number. Similar kinds of stories, lots of pictures and things that we see uh, about a woman who, whether you agreed with her politically or not, wasn't the point. She battled for 25 years over four major kinds of cancers that probably were not related and still was able to go to work every day. Uh, Again, a woman of grace and courage who was able to offer that kind of reconciliation to all people and that desire to draw in for justice, particularly for women and those that are oppressed. I think that's our context. That's where we find ourselves now. And it's important to name that because that's how we come here. The gospel parable, I've said this on all the weekends I've been here, parables are designed to confuse us. They are designed to make you uncomfortable. If we read the gospel in this parable and at the end we feel comfortable, we haven't heard the gospel. We haven't heard the parable. It was designed to make people sit up and take notice, not sit back and kind of say, oh, yeah, well, that's no big deal. So they're designed not on one level to make sense. And that's a hard part of the challenge. I think the various names of this parable are misnamed because they focus on the workers. When I think the real focus really should be on the generosity of the landowner. But as we gather here today, there's much to reflect on with it. You know, where do you identify in the story? That might be the first question. I think most of us naturally go to the people who started early and have been working a long time. And we feel this resentment that these people who came at the end are getting something extra. They're getting something they don't deserve. They're getting something they didn't work for. It's not fair. You're around any young people, you hear this all the time. One gets a bigger piece of cake for It's not fair. Which see, it's not fair. This isn't right. And it's constantly, so it's ingrained in us. So by the time we came further along in our development to a parable like this, Of course, it is not fair. That is just so wrong. It's part of the ethos that's in us. Maybe at times we should identify and actually could with the late arrivals. I'm sure there have been times in your experience and in your living where someone has been incredibly generous with you when you didn't deserve it. You know, lots of people then tend to be really quiet about it because we don't want anybody to know because, well, maybe I shouldn't have got this or maybe it shouldn't have happened this way. But I think we've had both experiences where we have labored long and hard and the times when generosity has won out and someone has been incredibly kind and incredibly generous with us. It's both of our experiences. So to say that we're only one of those laborers I think misses the point. We really are both at different times in our experience. You know, one of the interesting lines, I think, in the, particularly for the late arrivals, is no one has hired us. What does that challenge us to in this time where so many people are unemployed? So many people are underemployed. Some people can't put food on their table because no one has hired us. You know, it was the case that 2,000 years ago, 
that's how hiring was done. You went to the village market square and you contracted with people and you did it. But we're in 2020 and I got news for you. It's happening every day. And if you want to know where, go at dawn to the Home Depot. And you're going to find people of color. You're going to find Hispanic men sitting there waiting for someone to hire them for that day. It's not hard to find. Who's beautifying our cities? Who's keeping them clean? Who's doing our landscaping? It's not just something from 2,000 years ago. I had an occasion because of changes in schedule to be at a couple of Home Depots, and the folks are there. So they're not getting insurance, they're not getting anything, and so they contract with whatever contractor comes for the day right there, and they bargain about what they're going to get paid, and off they go. What does that say that 2,000 years later, we're still doing that kind of day labor contract? There are states that are well aware of that and have now created relatively safe spaces. They're just plots of land, maybe with a little fence around it, that say day laborers are here. And they gather there rather than the Home Depot or the Lowe's parking lot to contract for the day. No one has hired us. Are the people who are late arrivals really to blame? I think there's part of us with an American ethos again that thinks, well, they just didn't work hard enough or they didn't do this or they should have just done this. Maybe. Maybe. I think the challenge is for us to think about what would it look like if in our prayer and our reflection we reflected on being the landlord? None of the workers. The landlord chooses to be generous and chooses to be kind. How many of us are in situations, maybe not so many, but some of us where people in, we work with have had to been let go, whether we're sitting on a board or a company or around a table, and it's not that we don't want to, but there's no money. And they've had to have been furloughed, laid off. What are we called to do and to be in a world where there is so much brokenness? We're called to be that landlord, which is the representation really of God's generosity. You know, part of me wants to say, what if the payment wasn't a daily wage? What if the payment were $100 million? Would you care then if you would work the day and the other person because it was such an abundance and it was such an overflowing amount? What is it about us that can't share joy and gratitude for the people who arrived late that they will eat tonight? that there will be sufficiency for them. Why is it in us at times that we look down on that and can't rejoice in the wellness and the luck, if you want to use that line, of the late arrivals? Let's put it this way. Let's suppose it's salvation. Do we not want them to be saved because they came late? Now, this is the story that's often used to justify deathbed conversions. You know, and the person's a wild sinner their entire life, and then at the end, they get the sacraments and everything is fine. You know, and we look down on that. We've had the joy as Christians of knowing and being in community and loving our God. We have the benefit of the long day, and it is a benefit, and it is a truth that transforms us. So the call for us, I think, is to one of generosity and gratitude. Are we grateful for what we do have? And then can we be generous with that in ways that calls us to reach out to the broken and to those in need around us? I said at the beginning that the parable wasn't supposed to make you feel comfortable. And I don't think it is. I hope you can never drive past a Home Depot again and think of not that saying and that truth. In doubt, go there at 6 in the morning and see what you see. You'll see what I saw. The challenge, again, continues to be, can we be people of generosity and kindness? Which allows me on one level, I guess, to return to Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her great friendship with Anton Scalia, who was right of right and she's left of left, as they didn't agree on anything other than Ruth Gator Binsberg was not a smart, graceful person and a force <clears throat> to be reckoned with. And so they would dine regularly and they would laugh. Why is it that people who radically disagree can't do so with respect? 
with kindness. Challenge for us to recognize that we really are people who have received from a long day's wage and from being the last people there. And we're called to be that ever gracious landlord because God is so gracious with us. God died on the cross for sinners, for people who didn't even know it. He still chose to be there. Be transformed. Be kind. Be generous. And as bad as we think 2020 is, then 2021 will be very different. Dear friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For, For our, our sake, sake he was he crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He so. suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. The he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Gathered here as a community, as a church, as people, have shared abundantly in God's generous care, mercy, and love for us, we dare to present our needs. For the church, in its efforts to be a model of love and justice, particularly toward persons whose lived experience has fallen short of that goal, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings upon our nation in the weeks ahead, As we continue to prepare to select our leaders, we pray. For those in parts of our country who are victims of hurricane and wildfire disasters, we pray. For our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrating Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the year, we pray. For the poor who hunger and thirst, seeking sufficient food and shelter and respect and dignity, we pray. For all who are in ill health, especially Annie Celentano, Mayor Cromwell, Jim Garland, Grace Lakata, Ed Vare, Gloria Williams, and Bill Wingard, we pray. For all who have died, including Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those personal intentions which all of us hold within our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our Ever gracious God, we gather in your presence, recognizing that we do so in an abundance of your grace love and forgiveness. Please help us be those instruments in the world and hear our prayers and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You give us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. For your son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for all ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples. So now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sarah was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, holy fathers, we celebrate the more of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, and be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may conform to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking to the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Very especially for Justice Ginsburg. And all the dead is faith you alone have known. Permit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Spouse Joseph, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Francis Xavier, St. Oscar Romero, and all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son.
For it is through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gathered here by God's grace as one family of faith, we pray in the words that Jesus left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us gathered this very evening, peace. Peace I leave you, peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, peace to those in home. And so we pray, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus the Christ who came into the world to heal us, to love us, to lead us home to the Father. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter. The, the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep us safe for life eternal.
Let us pray. For gracious God, strengthened by your body and blood, we pray that we can be transformed from people who grumble to people who are full of gratitude and generous with all those we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. For those of you at home, our closing hymn is For the Fruits of This Creation. <laughs>